Billy Bob Brainerd here with a simple thermos repair that can save you hundreds on a service call. Woke up this morning and the house was cold. It was about uh, 63 degrees or so. The heat should have been on, um, but it wasn't. I could hear the fan running, but there was no um, actual heat coming out of the vents. It was just um, kind of cold air. So I um, went up in the attic and uh, took off the covers to the heater to start uh, troubleshooting to find out what was wrong. I took the left side of the cover off. Um, that way I could see the gas jets and the uh, flame sensor and the igniter. Um, I left the other side on, on the right, because that held down the um, pressure switch um, that needs to be activated in order for the thermos to come on at all. So after that, I turned the thermos on with my Ecobee Smart thing, which was nice. I could do that from my um, phone. And what I observed is the uh, fan comes on, the, um, the igniter comes on, you can see that glowing, and then the flames, uh, the gas comes on and actually some flames start shooting out. Um, but then after about, I would say like five or six seconds, um, the flames just went out. So the gas shut off. And then it kind of thought for a while, um, and probably after about another 30 seconds, 60 seconds, um, it tried again. So igniter comes on, gas comes on, flames start, and then it shuts off. So there's a thing called a flame sensor. Let me show you a picture of it my attic anymore so I'm going to kind of cheat and just so you, show you some pictures off the internet but that's what the flame sensor look like looks like and um, what that does is it um, it senses when there's heat and flame generated and kind of sends a signal uh, to the heater to tell it to continue running because the gas is ignited and everything is working like it should but in my case um, it wasn't getting that signal so it, it said hey I don't sense any heat so I'm going to tell the heater uh, to cut the gas um, because it's a safety issue. Uh, if there's no heat that I'm sensing, that means the, the gas is just not getting burned and that's a, that's a, a dangerous situation. So what I did is I uh, immediately checked the, um, after I let things cool off a little bit, I checked that uh, flame sensor. And I noticed two things. Um, for one, uh, the point where the bolt attaches this, um, that's a grounding point. And that was loose. It had a sheet metal screw. Um, probably should have never had that in the first place, but it just came loose. And over the years with the vibrations from the heater, um, it worked its way loose. Um, so I'm assuming the ground connection um, was, was not adequate. The other thing is these things get a little bit of buildup of residue on them. You can see, um, well, you can see the igniter, right? So that's, um, that was okay in my case. Um, but the flame sensor, um, at least in this thermostat, kind of looks like that. And you can see that little bolt right there. That's the one that in my case, um, you know, was loose and, and letting this whole thing kind of wiggle around. So take that out, um, take out the flame sensor and clean it off. And here you can just see, use a little bit of emery cloth um, or, or fine sandpaper and just get that clean. Takes about two seconds. Um, and then put the whole thing back in and tighten it down really well. In my case, um, it was actually an awkward reach. This is not my thermostat, it's some other picture, but it was an awkward reach to get a screwdriver or a wrench um, into that. So I had to um, ring up some pliers and, and kind of work my way around um, to get a really good grip and make sure I could tighten that down really well. And as soon as I did that, um, bingo, um, turned it on, um, works like a charm. It's running now and, and heating up my house. So. Um, little tiny thing uh, that can go wrong that um, you may not suspect or may not think should ever go wrong if they built it right in the first place. Um, but it's a quick fix and you can see if you